when a scale bearer with a healthy stack and bull rush gets protection, he is absolutely unkillable. And he's just one of the many champions that become dangerous with power up. The two power ups being quad damage, which gives you, does what it says on the tin, really, quad damage output. And then the protection that heavily reduces the damage that you take. So if you give yourself, if you are a fast champion, you're sort of running those loops around the map, taking out people while taking almost no damage yourself, which is naturally very dangerous, particularly when you get the soul, you can pretty much run it in some ways uncontested. But if you're a massively tanky champion on the defense or offense, you are just able to do whatever you want. So let's take a, a minute before we get into this game. Obviously, you know, thank you very much for being patient with us, watching at home. We'll get into this as soon as we can. I actually believe we're Ooh. just about to get going. Yes, what timing, perfect. Now, Deus with, immediately with, yeah, the BJ Blaskovic, which we will see a lot in Sacrifice. He's not particularly popular in Duel, with the exception of maybe Corrupted Keep. On this game mode, specifically though, you will see BJ picked very often. Now, I actually think that, that, that that's quite a nice diversity because we basically never saw him yesterday. But Blaskovic, you pick him for that role of he is good at just shredding down champions. He pops the dual wield and he just deletes them from existence. In a game mode like Sacrifice, where you can defend with him, you can attack with him, he's just he's a very versatile champion in that regard. And all of a sudden now, being able to be more efficient at getting frags in certain situations can be super important. So I'm hoping we see uh, a lot of impact here. But one thing I noticed right off the bat on this champion select, a, a distinct lack of big champions, those big body beefy, the Sawlag, the Clutch, um, the Scale Bearer. Normally we saw at least one of those per team in the qualification stages, at least for Europe. Where, if you haven't watched the stream as of late, we actually haven't really seen these teams for a couple of weeks because they qualified in week one and two. So there's been quite a break in between. So I have no doubt the compositions they're going with have changed between then and now. But this is an interesting one to start off with, I think. There's also the major element that this is, I mean, we can't beat around the bush here. It's a million dollar series. Many of these players have been keeping their gameplay very, very close to their chest, but we have begun. It's gonna be Rush B on blue. And already the frags come in and they will be rapid and plentiful. Already though, at 20 seconds, the first soul is gonna be spawning. So dying close to 20 second mark is when it gets a little bit dangerous. You can see that little yellow marker at the bottom. That is where the soul is gonna spawn and already it has been secured. Now, this is the very important point where you have the option to choose exactly what obelisk you want to drop it off at. It looks like Memphis going towards obelisk B, but there are people lying in wait. It doesn't matter though, even though he may go down here, he's, the important thing is that he's been able to secure the obelisk that his team wanted. But his team actually instantly being able to catch up to him and defend this. So you can see that percentage is ticking up. As soon as it gets to 100, the round will be over and already getting 10%. 10% of the work is already done. Here we go, this is the extra element where once you've got the obelisk taken, you need to be holding it as long as possible. It takes a grand total of uh, two minutes 30 from start to finish in total time for an obelisk. And that's not a lot of time. We need to take into fact how fast Quake is. So it looks like the defendants have managed to steal the soul away right now, but can they safely get it to obelisk A? That's gonna be the difficult thing, is once, you're, once you have put points into an obelisk, that is designated for yours for the rest of the round. So right now the defendants, even if they wanted B, have no choice but to go for A now. And there we go, a gauntlet kill coming out from Hal. Now that may have seemed like BM in some ways to those that don't watch Dot Sacrifice, but gauntlet kills, it's one of the most valuable You weapons. see a lot of gauntlet kills in this mode, because just look at how close and frantic some of these engagements can be, but right now, so we see uh, Rush B are trying to defend B. It's quite appropriate. And we saw right there the Blast Witch in big trouble. Opted not to go for dual wheel before respawn because it's quite a chunky cooldown. You definitely want to have it on respawn rather than the last minute and a waste that 50 seconds. Now Rush B have managed to secure the Obelisk once again. And we can see 25% almost. Only just got taken away, but defendants can Kreisa get some points down onto A. It's going to be crucial for them to at least try and even things out a bit. 24% might seem like a chunky lead, but that's not a long time. Right, it's so that's what contesting for this power up. Yeah, and the power up is going to be quad damage, which means that whoever takes quad, yes, you're going to be doing massive damage, but you do become public enemy number one. So your, your team kind of needs to be with you there to keep you healthy. Tuga tries to get out there, gets fragged as well. Power up goes into the hand of, we'll find out very, very soon. Memphis currently has access to it and the soul in hand and an injection. It's going to be hard to stop him. Indeed, Memphis is going to be the one to take down now as he safely secures it. The Ghost Walk comes out, so he's able to secure that frag. He is now surrounded by enemies. Oh, a quad oh, damage oh. gone. Oh, shredding up with the rocket follow-up too. That's a quick double kill as we try and defend this B from Rush B. And now they have themselves a chunky 35% to the 7% on the side of defendants. A quad damage gauntlet. Poor Nyx. It takes out a couple. Actually making that three and rockets on the obelisk location. Definitely one of the most important weapons to just pepper damage left, right and center, making nowhere safe to hold. 
Injection coming out from Kreese to keep himself alive, but he is hanging around. Defendants now have some people here trying to defend. Rush B really trying to hold this Obelisk Lightning Guns all over the place. And Deus is going to get a quick kill, as is Memphis. Too good getting one, too. Deus, another one. Frags all over the place. Not been able to secure that soul. This is going to be very important for them. Rush B comfortably sitting on 54%, but all you got to do really is hold the Obelisk for a small amount of time, and the percentage will rack up. For it's, as long as it's, it's not it's two contested. seconds. Two seconds to 1%. So if you can sort of just do the maths on the spot, that's not a huge amount of time. But the question is, can you do that whilst being surrounded by enemies, while you're thinking about what weapons can we control? What power-ups do we control? And at the moment, it looks like defendants are positioned very well to hold onto the obelisk for a little while longer. Sneak Creaser has the injection pop, so he's going to have that little bit of sustain in the fight should it start soon. So let's take it. Yeah, yeah it looks like Rushby are coming in from the side of the rocket. Now, how they choose to attack the obelisk, we haven't seen how Rushby have actually tried to seize an obelisk just yet. But before we uh, continue, 10 seconds away, the power up's going to spawn, so we're going to see the next fight take place. You can already see the members of Rushby trying to sort of gravitate towards the power up. The question is, what power up is it going to be? The power up really quad is damage. Yeah, quad damage once again, and that the, the power up really is where the the pace will just shift dramatically. Because if you are just finding it so hard to break into a point to get that soul back. Going for the power-up and securing that for your team can be the difference of being able to safely get it. But the problem is if you then lose the power-up to the team that is then defending at the time, I mean, just look at this, 48% to defendants. They have almost managed to even things up in a single capture. Trying to bring it back, but being able to throw the soul, very, very valuable asset, but... And actually, look, they haven't really been defending it for a huge amount of time, but they've already made it 54 to 54. Here's an extra element. We are seeing the spawning shotgun way more frequently in Sacrifice because you're point blank so often and you die so much. In many ways, the starting shotgun is the most dangerous weapon you can take of the three. So oh, many gauntlets. Havoc gets two gauntlet kills trying to defend, but is just simply too outnumbered. Was able to drop the soul off onto the obelisk, but looks like the defendants are here in force. Three of them here trying to get this soul back. But Sever's here once again and not let them get away, but the question is, can he actually stop them? Now, it's very common that we see when someone's about to get fragged, they'll throw the soul in the opposite direction to just make the team have to do more work. But if there is an enemy lying in wait, they'll just pick up the soul and bring it back regardless of what happens. Defendants pick up a very respectable amount of frags, but Rush B actually still managing to defend the soul. Suga tries to throw it away, does manage to get it over the uh, barrier there. Uh, Avec with the delivery. Oh, was he able to drop it off in time? I don't think he quite got in the radius, did he? We'll see what happens. It looks they like have. he did. They got it. There we go. 68 versus 63. This is a unbelievably close round. Memphis with the pickup, and he's got the injection. Also, because we've gone over the five-minute oh, mark, wow. because we've gone over the five-minute mark, and the injections have all been used. Both Anarchies now have over 81 HP. The injection puts you one HP over your maximum health. They've used it enough times now. They can tank two rails without needing armor. Very important for a soul runner. That really is where an already quite difficult champion to deal with becomes all that harder. Two okay. seconds, power up. Any minute, going in for the die orb. He's been able to secure it, but unfortunately, in some ways, unfortunately, it was quad damage, so he would have been easier to frag. But his team are there to protect him. Goes down anyway, but the fight begins for quad. Wow, Kreisa with four frags with a super nail gun, putting in all that work. And he was able to drop off the soul too. That was a wonderful sequence for Kreisa. That percentage. All they need now is 18% and this round will be over. And the fact that the defenders have the power up at this stage, the defending team that is about to win, having the power up is very, very hard to deal with. It's still there for quite a while. The super nails don't land, but it is going to do a good job of sort of denying that front area. So how trying to take a detour, Avec cleans him up and delivers it back and not without getting a frag himself. 10% left to go on the side of defendants for this round one. They're looking strong at the moment. They managed to secure the mega health. It is being contested, but it looks like there are so many of the defendants here ready to defend. And Inns is unfortunately going to drop two as well. They're sort of scattered in, coming in one or a pair at a time, but defendants are just where they need to be, and that's going to be a strong round one and a nice comeback from defendants. Absolutely. They didn't have an amazing start, but if you are able to defend your own obelisk efficiently, the second you get that one delivery, it really, the ball goes in the opponent's court, right? So we saw that they were able to take the soul neutrally, Rush B were able to deliver it towards Round B and defend it quite well. But when it came to them having to attack a point, that's when I think the struggle started to come through. They weren't as coordinated on the offense. They trickled in a little bit one at a time. And because of the distinct lack of beef, these rockets will delete you in one or two shots easily. Especially early on, like you said, uh, now we're going into a second round. The Anarchy Health, I believe, is going to be resetting now, so they're going to have to try and take themselves back up again. Inns, unfortunately, stuck between a rocket and a hard place and goes down immediately. Now the defendants with that soul, they now have the option to deliver. Looks like the delivery will be at Obelisk B. 
There we go. Now, actually, something here. The defendants, they were able to choose the obelisk this time. Last round, they were left with obelisk A. Now they immediately chose to go to B. So whether this is the one they might prefer out of the two, we're able to take round one on the other one regardless. Shotguns are going to be such a crucial element, both the starting shotgun and the super shotgun, respectively. You are so close at all times. The damage output of the shotguns can in some ways be uncontested, especially if you don't have a rocket launcher. Well, as of a few patches ago, the standard shotgun did get a bit of a damage buff, so it's a little bit more reliable now and is being put to good use for sure. Yeah, I believe the uh, regular shotgun does four damage per pellet rather than three. May not sound like much, but in the grand scheme of things, just how many shotgun blasts go through, very important indeed. Defendants already able to get almost 30% immediately and counting. They're able to secure it and put it straight back on thanks to a nice sequence from Avec. Well, Rush B had a fantastic start because they were able to control where they delivered the soul. But because defendants have had a good start, the issue Rush B have had is actually getting the offense, coordinating and taking the soul from the base. Now they haven't even had the chance to deliver it first. They're seemingly having a much harder time here. One thing I'm actually really enjoying about this so far is when you watch the duel and you see the focus on the rocket, the rail, the lightning gun, that's like the real core three. Whilst that is still uh, here to a degree, we're seeing so much use of the other weapons right now. We're seeing so many nail kills, loads of shotgun usage, and it's all working out for them. That's definitely because there's an extra six heads on the map and uh, not as many weapons to go around. You factor in when you're in duel, you do the, the best with options. what you can find, and it's going to be quad damage again. Uh, yet to see protection in this game. Yeah, it's been quad every single time. And actually, with with teams like this, where there really is not a single chunky champion on the side of there, going in with the gauntlet, Memphis. Dude, now he's delivered it. How long can they hold it? Well, maybe not long with uh -oh. having that quad damage. He's only got an SMG, but even an SMG is going to be dangerous. Now he's got a rail, which makes it worse. 320 damage per quad damage rail is going to delete any one of these champions. Two good yeah, double. Yeah, Triple. Tuka was able to run in and get hold of the quad damage as well just to get the soul back. And now he has everything he needs, but only has a rail gun. And there was actually no one on the jump pad to contest. They've just met them in the middle, but they've made that complete three-man attack. They're trying to close in on too good. Sev manages to take him out and takes the quad damage because of it, trying to deliver the soul backwards towards Obelisk A. The quad's going to run out, but Nyx with the Ghost Walk can still survive. She has to deliver it first! But there you can see the defendants, they all died at their own Obelisk, but they respawned in between the two Obelisks. So when they respawned, they were able to quickly reposition themselves to try and stop Rush B from getting back here. And we can see they're already here in Force 3 to the, the right-hand side, and one in the middle trying to contest this. And they're getting frags all over the place. They're going to be taking this soul back quite easily. Oh, but no, Sev says no with the gauntlet. Stay put, my friend, and again, just, just completely getting surrounded. And these obelisks are a very common thing that we see very often. And many of them just had, again, the starter shotgun. But if they've all got it, that is so much damage. So a little bit of an awkward situation there, but that's one thing we'll be seeing a lot is passing that soul. If, if, if you have hold of the soul and you know you're probably going to be dying any second, just throw it as far away as possible from your opponent's obelisk to make them just have to work that little bit harder to get it back. This micromanagement is crucial. How is the lone defender here, though, with very little health and armor? Goes in for the dual wheel, doesn't, unfortunately, cannot survive long enough. So that's going to be a long cooldown, quite a while before he has his dual wield again. Choosing when to activate those abilities in sacrifice can be quite difficult at times. Even trying to manage that cooldown, you need to make sure you have it when you're trying to seize an objective, but at the same time, you know, do you use it to survive in between? Protection! Ah. Here we go! Oh, now. but it's protection on Anarchy. Uh-oh. Protection on Anarchy, who is currently on the obelisk. If he can get this soul, he's now going to be able to run this back. Rocket jumps to take minimal damage. Here we go. There really isn't much they can do to stop him. He uses the injection to become nice and healthy. The uh, speed boost, letting him deliver it easily as well. And, I mean, that's what happens when Anarchy, normally so easy to frag, he's got the protection, and he is still a one-man army. He's still alive. Even with 33 health. Oh, but that 25 armor is going to be doing wonders. Is he going to be able to survive this? Still so low. Oh, gets the frag. Protection. Unkillable. And that one good rampage with the protection has put them in the lead. I guess the question is for how long they are being completely surrounded here. Chrissa picks up the soul. He also has the injection, but using the gauntlet on the teleporter just in case an enemy's going to be lying in wait. These little decisions are going to be super important. But oh, loses the 1v1. Unfortunately, it ends though. Avec here, looking to clean up. Defendants have themselves positioned nicely. Too good getting some frags in the corner as well. But so much death all over the place. And Defendants able to seize a 6% lead and counting. That's only going to build up bit by bit. Now they only have 30% left. And if they can hold it, I mean, that's going to be no time at all. Oh, wow. Instant frag. Two rockets more than enough to take down, unfortunately, Blaskovich. 
The danger is that at this percentage, every respawn counts. Like, you can't afford to be out of action for the smallest possible second, when all they have to do is get 18%, and it's still climbing, still uncontested. There's a Ghost Walking Nyx lying in wait behind. She has used up the Ghost Walk, so she's not going to be able to use that to survive, but you're not going to be surviving much in Sacrifice anyway. Now, this is going to be an awkward exchange here. Dependents have 10% left to go, but we can see the power-ups could be spawning in 20. If Rush Beak can at least stop them capturing for just a few seconds, they might be able to contend for the power-up. But at this rate, I don't even think the power-up is going to be able to spawn in time. Defendants, have they taken the map? Very likely. One more percent, and it's going to be game over. Trying to push this. They can't die at any point, but unfortunately, they do. Defendants take both rounds. I think the second round was definitely... In the favor of defendants from start to finish, we saw a little bit of percentage halfway through, but it just wasn't enough. I mean, Rush B were looking good when they had access to the power-up and they were able to really get it on the right champion and make the most out of it. They did well, but ultimately, I think it was just the defendants. They just played it a little bit smarter as a team. I think the most important thing they had was they were able to hold onto the soul a little bit better. Because in the first round of that, we saw Rush B were able to take quite a nice lead early on. But right as the defendants were able to secure it themselves, they just held onto the soul a little bit more stable. That's really what it comes down to. It's definitely not just a game of taking a point you, you really need to be good at defending your own because it, it, it it's the defending that's going to win you the round and, and that's what you need to be super efficient at so when the situation is not in your favor and it's like right guys we need to work together here we need to push this point we need to make sure that not only are we able to stand on the obelisk long enough to take the soul but that we can get out alive and that's a humongous element where it's only half the attack taking the soul you still need to be able to safely deliver it and even though you frag people on the point they're going to be respawning and they're going to be trying to hedge you off. So you need to make the most out of the life you have. Because once you go down, that push is pretty much over. Indeed, but that's Ruins of Sarnath now off the board immediately. Ruins of Sarnath being quite a popular map, I think. We saw it a lot during the first couple of weeks, but that does leave us with just three left to go in a Blood Covenant burial chamber and a lockbox i do believe burial chamber will be where we're heading to for map number two that's the first time i've seen those burial chamber effects as well they look pretty swish it does i mean that that, that logo above the barrier that's probably the best logo to background combination we've seen on that stage so far what because of quake i mean it just looks sick I mean, I mean do i need to say much more about that well, definitely not but burial chamber another sacrifice specific map uh, within the quake world championship I know it's, it's on uh, free for alls and team death match but when it comes within to dual and sacrifice it's just sacrifice is burial chamber and for good reason you know we, we, this it's quite a large map there's a lot of space um it's quite exciting to watch in my opinion uh, a burial chamber there's a lot of space around um it means you have a lot of options where to go you can sort of go around the outside where it's very spacious but quite easy to maneuver you can go sort of through the catacombs underneath maybe the buildings to the side but the two obelisks themselves are so dramatically different between each other you have kind of like the cathedral and the caves and we see teams dramatically favor one or the other but can be good at both i think this is one of the most unique things about burial chamber in that it's the vast difference within the two obelisks as you just mentioned there's the cathedral which in many ways we see a lot of teams, or we did in week number two, and that's the one thing to remember is that there's been a significant amount of time, so we don't really know some of these strats the teams are going to be adopt adapting here. But the cathedral location for the obelisk has been by far a location that everyone wants to hold because of the walls and the distance that you have, that you can really hold that location and just create that bottleneck in the, in the middle. But so it Catacombs, looks like you don't have the same luxury of that. It actually looks like we're on the... Uh, on the the route of maybe seeing the exact same composition back to back. So do you think both this is a, 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 a situation of two teams that seem to favor those smaller champions now? Well, smaller champions on Burial Chamber, it's going to be, uh, you've got a lot of room to move. And if you're a small champion with good speed, your mobility makes it easier for you to not only deliver the soul or protect your team that is delivering the soul, but chase down people that have the important objectives. If you have a power up on this map, like quad damage, for example, you're already going to be quite hard to hit. Again, especially if you're someone like an Anarchy of which on this map, Anarchy can fly around pretty much willy-nilly. But this is actually a map where the rail gun is particularly prominent, I think. We see a lot of rail usage here. There's a lot of open spaces, a lot of sort of long sight lines, corridors, being outside and what have you. But if you can be good with that rail on this map, you, it can be a bit of a game changer. But all of a sudden, when every champion in the game is tiny, all of a sudden it becomes a little bit harder to land those consistently. So here we go, Burial Chamber, the sole location is going to be smack bang in the middle, which is going to be the most dangerous location. Inns going in for that immediate dual wield. Blaskovich, one of the only champions in the game that is still lethal on spawn, because a dual wielding SMG will still melt health. 
now a few seconds away from the spawn respawning it looks like brushby were able to hold on to it but he's gonna swiftly go down to deus right now defendants have the soul how long and that's the question with how many teammates of both teams are just swarming in memphis scores a couple for avec with the cleanup how currently has the soul throw up to throw it away before he goes down very popular but seb trying to deliver unfortunately because he goes down all he's really done is make defendants life easier and they now have obelisk a this is a dangerous obelisk to try and take but that's a bit of a, an awkward situation to be in there if both teams kind of want to start with the same obelisk and they're actively running towards it if you die right before capturing the obelisk you want and your team and your enemy team picks it up you basically just give them the obelisk and do the the work of getting it to the obelisk for them which is hard to avoid in a lot of situations if you really just oh. want that obelisk memphis trying to stay slippery staying alive can't quite deliver it that's so unfortunate he did all that work but at the last possible minute creasa lying in wait taken out himself but that was another situation where he knew he was going to die too good has a hold of the soul throws it away again knowing he's going to be going down and tries to throw the soul as far away as possible rush be able to secure it but are they safe he's going to be able to get back he has no health left and he's going to get taken down by avec and right before he's about to throw the soul towards zone obelisk just goes down regardless so it's going to be on his location making it way easier for deus to try and pick it up tries to almost fumbles the uh, toss a little bit in has it for the uh, dual wield Oh wow, instant meltdown coming down. Chrysler uh, falls immediately to that double LG. And again, defendants are here to stop him. This is that exchange. We see this all the time on Burial Chamber. It's so hard to get out of this middle situation. Only 12% progress made, but so many frags. Well, dealing with a team that has the soul currently, they're trying to deliver it. It's not really a matter of trying to chase them. It's actually beating them to where they want to be. But here we go. The first power-up spawns. Krisa picks up the protection. And those two, those two health pickups with protection in hand is uh, all you need really to be a massive headache throughout the entire duration of protection. While defendants were busy trying to secure the protection though, we saw Memphis was able to sneak oh. in and get hold of the soul. Almost jumps off the map, has to double back quite far to try and get back up again. If that was uh, any other champion, he would have got Ooh, And that was no. just a very unfortunate exchange. Just kind of hit the handlebars really and it just falls down yeah unfortunately memphis there seemed to hesitate you look it looked like he was sort of trying to go towards now, the outside it may look but... it may look like the soul is stuck but it will be respawning if it gets in a situation where it's technically out of bounds as such it respawns in the middle and there we go it does just that defendants managed to take it back a couple of teammates for rush b lying in wait creaser though quite healthy but not healthy enough for a super shotgun oh wow and as soon as the uh protection it's not there anymore. Memphis does fall down. Deus here trying to secure this soul. At the very least, going to start adding up some of this progress again. Only 20% done. It's not been a lot. It, they've done a good job. Rushby have done a good job of being able to, at the very least, prevent the percentage from climbing. The issue they've had is that they've just not been able to get percentage of their own yet. Yeah, we've actually seen some teams almost use the out of bounds, sort of like respawn of the soul to their advantage. If it's nowhere near their team, they'll just sort of throw it off the edge and let it respawn a little bit closer. Don't see it often, but we have seen a few, and it's usually on Burial Chamber. Now, there's the debris. That's a really nice little 180 rail on Amec also, but they've now got some percentage, and you said it yourself, defendants haven't actually been able to get much percentage in this round, so all Rush B need to do is hold it for about a minute or so, and they're actually going to be in the lead. But I spoke too soon. Then yeah, a couple of them were able to immediately take it away. Two good and Avec pairing together, sort of going for that sort of two v two almost in that situation. And defendants sort of trying to safely get this back, but we can see Rush B sort of positioning themselves to try Ooh. and stop them. Now, actually, wow, that, that rail, that rail did Kreisa a massive favor because he survived the shot, but it gave him a humongous boost of speed that allowed him to safely deliver. Here comes the power up again. Memphis with the protection, Anarchy with protection. It seems to be only Anarchy with protection this entire series. Yeah, Memphis has been able to get himself both power up so far using the railgun point blank is going to be able to safely use it really to its full advantage unless he can land these shots deus falls down still getting shot down half wow. protection but one hp still one hit away from death and he actually opted to go for the suicide very tactical suicide delivering the protection towards int instead who now has protection and a dual wield that was very smart taking that guaranteed death just to make sure his teammate was able to pick it up again and not the enemy that's the important one make sure that your team still controls the power up because it is such a game changer now they need to make safe passage, but with three health, that's going to be easier said than done. Oh man, that's, that, that's two for two now that that rush be able to get hold of the power, but haven't really been able to get a considerable amount of progress. 
considering it. If they were able to hold the power up, but not much progress was made while they had the percentage lead, it wouldn't be so bad. But because defendants are so far ahead, they are remaining behind, and the situation is never going in their favor. Memphis really has kind of been the MVP here of trying to just seize in, and is doing a good job of just assaulting this point. Defendants aren't really sitting on the obelisk to defend. They're sort of sitting themselves outside, trying to just stop Rush B from getting anywhere in it. But Excellent. Memphis able to thread the needle and just take the long route and get through. That's a lot of frags coming out. Rush B might be able to hold on and start this defense off that sequence of frags. What about three Three of the defendants all sort of died at the same time? The time it's going to take for them to respawn and then make their way back to this obelisk. It's all going to be guaranteed percentage that defendants can't really contest. But with 56 versus 24%, Rush B still have a lot of work to do. And this is another danger of this location compared to Obelisk A. Oh, wow. This sort of cave location, you are so much more vulnerable to rails and the opponent will be spawning on the side of the rails as well. But it also means that if you as the defending team can have access to the rails before you capture it, you then have that clear line of sight to stop them from coming in. Looks like we're getting a lot of shots now. That's a really good sequence of rails coming through from Ince. I really like Ince's actually uh, placement right there where he was opting to try and defend and protect the rail location just so they can't get it. No, though, Rush B. Rush B seemed to abandon the Obelisk to try and secure the power-up. And now I, I believe they got the power-up, but they, they lost the soul in, in the process. And now defendants are able to cleanly get it back. Well, just because of that, defendants now with the soul back in their location. Actually, I did notice a protection Nyx on the right-hand side. Too good with the double. That's Memphis here trying to take the soul again, but he is by himself. He's able to hold off for quite a while, but he is getting flanked around. Enemies on both ends. This has been quite a running theme for Memphis, where he's actually really good at going into the base and trying to sort of harass and take the soul himself. But he's consistently doing just that. He's running in by himself. There's very minimal support there. But a big part of that also is just defendants holding the point effectively. They do let Memphis in, but they don't let anyone else in to help him out. He might get in, but he never gets out. They are taking him down. Defendants now with 85%, almost approaching 15% left to go. Almost seven minutes into this round. This has been quite a long fought one, but defendants doing exactly what it says. They are defending perfectly. That's going to be how you take it. Passing it on, trying to deliver, but uh, Memphis goes down. Hal still alive, and he can definitely tank at least one rail. Maybe not anymore. Now he's taking some of that free damage, but the important thing is that he's still got the soul in hand. Even if you're not delivering the soul, you're making sure the enemy team doesn't gain percentage. But he's getting chased down by an injection. Anarchy, too good to follow through. Kreisa takes it back. And now with that injection, the speed boost in combination with the max health, this is going to be a pretty safe delivery. And especially now a rail just wow. able to connect. Kreisa's movement has just been so crisp when he has that soul trying to get it back to his cathedral. I think he has actually been the, the one to do so the most at the moment. Just uninterrupted, just gets it uses that injection and just navigates the map perfectly. There are so many frags. You spectate one, you spectate another. Everyone is dead. And because of that, defendants with that first round. It was a little bit harder fought, but ultimately, defendants still looking extremely dominant. And a big part of that was also the obelisk they chose. Three rounds in a row, too. I think it's going to be important for Rushby to make sure that they don't let defendants get the cathedral again. Because they did... They just didn't quite look as comfortable defending the caves Round as the fight. the cathedral. And that's actually the one that we saw Rush B go towards. They just died just seconds before dropping it off. But with that in mind, the pace of this entire round will be set by this first soul drop. And it's because you can choose either way. We're going to find out if defendants get the soul, if defendants can deliver the soul. If I was Rush B, I would be very concerned. There's that. Yeah, we drop it back up again. Throws it away. Oh. Sev is there with the rocket trying to stop him. But it looks like defendants Kreese are going off the MVP here. Managing to secure the Cathedral two rounds in a row. Now Rush B are going to be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. And 5% already. I mean, no time at all. They're almost already at 10% on this obelisk. And at this stage, Rush B are in trouble. Using the Dire to try and get in uncontested, which in some ways is a good idea because you take so much damage trying to get in. How goes down. A He's single nail did it. He must have been very close to death. Couple of members of Rush B trying to go in, but with that injection still good. Anarchy will remain a headache for now. But look how many members of Rush B? They've actually gone in for a big coordinated push. This is the kind of push they've needed for the entire match. This is almost this is one of the first times we've seen them go in as a team, and they were Ooh. able to uncontested get hold of the soul. And there we go, Memphis! As soon as he had teammates backing him up, was able to secure the soul, but was she defendant already with a 20%. But in some, ways, in some ways, though, Memphis was going so fast, it was not physically possible for the rest of his team to keep up with him. So he just went head first into like three members of defendants lying in wait. And because of it, they just fragged him. And now they've got it. Inns trying to deliver it back, but once more, surrounded by members of defendants. That also means that Inns is going to have that dual wheel back up for quite a long time. That has quite a hefty cooldown to it. 
They try and desperately get the soul away, but too good. Once again, Dependent's doing an amazing job just holding off this soul and getting it back where it belongs. Now they've got it towards A once more. So much Ooh. damage coming out. Interesting exchange. Power-up's gonna spawn in four seconds. You can notice the fight's starting to take place towards the middle of the map. It's gonna be, uh, let's see, protection. Memphis able to secure it. I mean, Memphis, it, it, I mean that, that's what you expect to see. Both teams' anarchies are really just designated to that role. It is their job to get that soul well, to run it back. What makes me worried is, yes, they have the soul, but who has protection? I guess we'll be able to see as soon as we see some fighting going on. Oh yeah, it looks like defendants have it. So Kreisa, oh no, it's going to be on the Anarchy having the protection. If he can get the soul, he's going to be almost impossible to intercept. Yeah, he's got the uh, speed boost as well. Yeah. It's going to be incredibly difficult for him to stop him. Protection plus instant health plus massive speed plus Anarchy is uh, very scary to try and stop. Memphis shutting him down with an immediate rocket though. A much better round though for Rush B, able to bring it to 26 to 20. They almost even things out beforehand. Memphis gonna try and put this one back up again. Oh, gonna wow. drop it off, but already defenders are here to stop him. They are ready. This defense, a huge part of defense. I mentioned it earlier, it's not gonna be just chasing them. It, it's heading them off, beating them to their own location in more numbers. You know, strength in numbers is so prominent in sacrifice. Too good with the soul in hand, looking to defend it back. Look at the percentage difference though. Not a huge amount, 2% separating the two teams. That will obviously change if they can deliver it, but the longer it goes back and forth, in many ways, the better it's gonna be for Rush B, because if they can get a percentage lead, it will be the first time they've had a percentage lead on this map. Already, it looks like Kreisa is there trying to stop past the LG, but it gets taken down by a direct rocket, and here we go. Two members of Rush B were here to defend this time. To secure it down, and Deus is gonna take him, but there we go, nice return. Looks like a telefrag happened Actually, in the uh, I was about to say, yeah, Tuga just got telefragged, but have no idea where it was, but it was on the kill feed. Rush B now in the lead for the first time in the round. This is going to be so good for them. Defenders, we can see three of them here trying to aggress. And here comes Hal from behind. They haven't seen him. He's got a rocket launcher. Manages to take out Avic. And is that going to be enough to defend? Hal gets another one. Deus goes down. Oh, and there's that final trade, but Rush B are still holding it. Yep. So even though they completely traded in a team kill for team kill, Rush B was still bringing that percentage up. That was a fantastic trade for them. And again, it's going to be protection, but the protection already goes down. Trading back and forth, getting a last minute gauntlet kill just for good measure. Hal with the protection again, but he's so weak. 21 health, make that 50. That's going to be enough. That was crazy. That was two, two individual people with the protection both died. So three people have had the protection already, but all three members that have picked it up were all on Rush B. They've actually managed to control this power up super good. Yes, actually uh, slipping away underneath, having a dual wield just in case he bumped into somebody in that hallway of which they wouldn't have been able to escape. But look at how many Ooh, of them the rugby waited kill. for him. Instant kill. No chance to survive three people at the same time. That was actually really smart. Avic went for the prediction rocket because he expected the soul, but the soul drop off into an immediate stop just to dupe that one individual rocket. Deus was there ready to pick up the soul. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, Memphis has it too. Hit. Trying to circle around. Oh, the gauntlet. Oh, he survived it. Yeah, had just enough health. That would have been a fantastic assassination if he was uh, weak enough for the gauntlet to kill. But speaking of kills, how many of these have taken place towards this obelisk again? And the rail, the dangerous element here when you're trying to defend this obelisk. You are so vulnerable to rails from massive distances. Indeed, defendants trying desperately to try and bring this soul back. But Rush B now have a significant lead, 64% to the 26. Defendants, though, looking really strong early on, but now have a little bit of work to do to even things out. They definitely have the round advantage, though. I mean, in, in many ways, they can afford to lose this round, but I guarantee no one wants that. On the defendant's side, of course. Avec, is he able to sneak himself through? They are here trying to stop him. Can he actually touch the obelisk? He can. He does immediately, but he was able to at least stall for a few seconds. Yeah, losing one enemy on that, sorry, losing one teammate on that location is going to be massive for you because it means you now have to try and deliver it safely by yourself. Walking straight into two goods rockets and Avec also. That was not a door that you wanted to go through. Avec with the cleanup. Too good with the soul trying to deliver it back. Oh, can he get away? He's taking a lot of damage. It looks like he might be drop off. Yes, he can. But the power up goes the way. It's the protection again and goes the way of Rush B. Now, Nyx with protection is even more annoying because she's hard enough to hit as is. And now, when she's almost dead, she can pop the invisibility and invulnerability. And using a defensive Nyx, safely trying to help out the teammates, trying to sort of stay with them, she's going to be impossible to kill. One big thing we saw early, though, was um, these rails to sort of intercept them on the way. We're not seeing as much of that in this round just to get that instant damage to just stop that soul carrier from being able to safely drop it off. And now Rush B have a significant lead. They have the protection and they have the soul. The important thing for Rush B also is that they're defending really well on an obelisk that they lost 
convincingly in the last round. This is just going to be good data for them. Just reminding them that, yes, they can indeed Memphis with three rockets. But it's just really important for them to know that they can indeed hold this obelisk. It's not going to be a wash. It's also a good adjustment that we saw, you know, almost a guaranteed loss last time. And they just, I mean, they just couldn't defend it as well. But this time is the complete opposite. And they actually have almost managed to completely take the round in total. That was disgusting, Telefrag. He did go down, but that was unbelievable regardless. There's the injection. Very common that we see uh, players because the one thing that many people may not know is that the soul drop is also the same as your ability. You cannot use your ability while you're holding the soul. The soul. So if you've got mobility, you tend to use the ability and then collect the soul. Rush B are now consistently beating defendants to their own obelisk though. As soon as defendants hold onto the soul, Rush B, they just get there straight away. And as a team, playing a lot better in this round because of it. I wish they were holding the other obelisk so I could indeed say they were, in fact, rushing B. Okay, he, he touched the obelisk, he can. He threads the needle right there too. Like, he dodged every single super nail. But now it looks like the defendants are actually here, able to defend the point now. They actually are here in numbers as opposed to just one or two. The door will just pop, but he still goes down in the injection in retaliation to Memphis. is now back to full health straight away. It's always really unfortunate if Blaskovic dies with the wield without even getting a single frag because it has such a long cooldown. That sounded like a quad damage to me. That quad damage was being primarily controlled by defendants in the first map. So oh, that was definitely a quad. That sounded like a quad. That is definitely a quad lightning gun. Oh, and he has the Mega Health 2. Instant LG coming down immediately, just melting player after player. And, and it's Avec. Avec. Avec with a quad damage lightning gun. But he gets fragged by Int. But the thing is, he got fragged at the last minute when the quad was just about to run out. At that point, the damage had already been done. Oh, and ends with that quad rail guy comes through, but dies immediately and trading. This happens all the time with quad. It becomes a, a complete scramble for quad to quad to quad to quad to quad. Because you're just trying to desperately stop the enemy team from getting it. And then when it's dropped, you want to secure it. But then you die and the cycle continues. If you collect quad, you are going to die. And it is unpreventable. It's just a question of how much damage can you do before that happens. I'm trying to sort of take it back, but look at how many members of the defenders are just controlling that high ground. But on the flip side, look at how many members of Rush B were in there. Are they able to escape? Inns tries to get out of there, but he himself unbelievably weak. But able to throw the soul quite a distance away and doing some of that work in seven, you're just passing it person to person. That was now a Inns fantastic pop. That was an absolutely fantastic toss. But he's getting chased down and he's by himself. There really wasn't much he could do to survive that. Creaser with the run on the outside going towards rail. Taking minimal damage. Good Still over 150 into the cathedral, but he has plenty of health left. That a nice return frag with a super shock, and his entire team is here trying to escort him back to this obelisk. Now, if defendants can keep this control for the next 30%, they will be able to take this map and take the series. But Rush B have been looking so good this round. This is going to be a very heartbreaking loss for Rush B if they don't get this round because they've done so much work. They've defended the obelisk for so long with the defendants on the verge of a comeback. In the last possible second, three frags might do just that. This is a good sequence to start things off. All of the defendants are going to respawn closer to the other obelisk, though, so they will be in position to defend. It's Here's how can they do it? Here is the decision. Do you prioritize? Oh, no. Do you prioritize trying to stop them taking the soul, or do you focus on the power-up? It looks like defendants have opted to go for the power-up. And it now make it very difficult for Rush B to try and safely deliver this. With a power-up wielding defendants, all of them in force and with the protection. And again, this it's is gone bad to news. Anarchy. Defendants have just let Anarchy pick this up every single time they've been able to control it. We have a 10 minute round and going. This is going down to the wire. There's still a significant amount of protection left too. But that was the call that defendants made. They went, guys, let them take the soul. We're going to completely gravitate towards the power-up. If it's protection, we can easily deliver it. We can bring it back and we can hold off with the rest of the power-up. Because of that, they've now taken the lead. 9% and they're going to win this entire series. Oh, how drops! Defendants, have they made the comeback? All these frags are going in the favor of defendants. 5% left to go. Are Rush be able to get here in time? I'm inclined to think so. Sev goes down as well. And with how many members of defendants are there to defend, there was very little Rush B could do in that last moment. It was a valiant attempt, but it again wasn't enough to stop the dangerous force of defendants. I think Rush B would have been a lot better. If, if every round could have gone down like that, Rush B would have been a lot more better off. Because I think they, they eventually started to find their groove as to what they wanted to do. It just took them a little bit too long to do so. Somewhat of a slow start, I suppose. Well, they are still very much in this, though. So it's not like they are out completely. We have a double elimination bracket today. So uh, they will get another chance in losers, obviously. That now means your safety net is gone. That, that uh...